Hello and welcome to another episode of Pony411. This is episode 47. I'm your host, Alcatraz, and I have with me today, Nemesis. Hello. We got a bunch of stuff to talk about, a whole bunch of new stuff. whole lot. whole lot, yeah. We got a, another episode that came out. No. We have a comic to review. Woohoo! Yeah. We also got some fan content. Yeah. And Nemesis will be announcing a, a couple winners of his giveaway from last yeah. week. So, not yet. Not yet. Well, we'll get to that at the end. <laughs> Just as a reminder, you can find all the links for the news and fan content in our show notes, which can be found at pony411.libsyn.com slash show notes. Anyway, let's, let's just jump right in. In convention news, Brenda Critchlow, the voice of Zakora, will be in attendance at this year's Fiesta Equestria, along with community musicians I.B. Abroni Rapper and Fanning, with possibly more on the way. Another convention, the Crystal Fair Convention in Helsinki, Finland, has announced that Daniel Ingram himself will be there. So if you're on Finland. that side, yeah, if you're on that side of the pond, it's kind of a long trip for him. Yeah. Babscon news: the developers behind the game Legends of Equestria will be there, and they should have a playable version of the game. Also. BabsCon has announced that Ashley Ball herself will oh be in goodness. attendance. And yes, has to be BabsCon and not ever free. Maybe. God, I want to need to get her autograph. Maybe. Anyway, this means BabsCon will have all main six voice actors in attendance. First con to haul it off, too. Yep. Huge list of, of guest artists. The guests. It's crazy. Yeah. And they got all, all of them. They will also <laughs> be having Heather Breckel, Tony Fleeks, and Heather Neufer from the MLP Comics in attendance as well. So I don't think we've had a convention with that many. They're going all out. Yeah. Let's just hope it doesn't I mean, turn into a unicorn style. Meltdown. Yeah, that, the last time we had a whole bunch of whole bunch of guests show up, it was unicorn, and that didn't go so well. But this one, this one is looking looking like another big one. Hopefully, mm-hmm. it, it, they pull it off. Big Apple PonyCon this year will have Kathy Westluck as a special guest for a seminar on voice acting. So that's kind of kind of neat. EQD's Calpain is also going to be there doing a big study on the fandom for a c- college project that he's doing. I think he's even going to be interviewing the original creator of My Little Pony. Wow. Yeah. And there's also doing a themed uh, cupcakes and stuff too. So that's interesting. Outside of convention news, there's... In a media article going around, a nine, nine-year-old boy by the name of Grayson, he was being bullied for bringing a Rainbow Dash backpack and lunchbox to school. The biggest issue here, I believe, is that the school, instead of trying to deal with the bullying, just told him to not bring the stuff anymore. Wow. Yeah, that's just like, really? That's a super lazy way of dealing with quote unquote dealing with it. Yeah, that's not dealing with it. That's just no. That's pretty much encouraging it's pretty bullying. much hoping it'll just go away. Yeah. It, it's it's almost encouraging the bullier. Because mm-hmm. they're not you see not being dealt with. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which is really, really lame. And I know like of course not surprising a lot of people are getting mad about it. Fortunately it's making the rounds. A yep. whole bunch of people are getting upset and it's hitting a lot of mainstream news outlets so bring the heat <laughs> yeah hopefully they'll they'll at least hopefully fix that yeah. <laughs> or at least attempt to anyway a brony tale a documentary that's been in production since 2012 starring the likes of ashley ball and some community some fandom community people saber spark dusty cat and silver hound that documentary will finally be debuting at the Tribeca Film Festival. <laughs> so that one looks like it's going to be better than some of the other documentaries we've <laughs> had. Yes. I hope. We hope. We'll see how that goes. Bar's kind of low, to be honest. Yeah, official ones. I think there have been some community-made ones that were pretty, pretty good. Anyway, this year's BTVA Awards, the Behind the Voice Actor Awards, are happening, and there's a whole bunch of MLP voice actors and My Little Pony itself, I believe. Yep. The show itself is up for voting. So we have a link to that. Because there's a lot. Yeah, I'm not going to go over it. There is a lot. We will have a link to that in the show notes. So click that and get to voting. 
Stay Brony, my friends, podcast, and Peter New have started a fundraiser to help out the Dickman family, which is, if you know him on Twitter, the Brony Mommy and Brony Granny. Apparently, Brony Granny's been dealing with some heart problems and just recently had a heart attack, and they're facing a large, large medical bill. I think it's like $15,000 so Ouch. far. So that fundraiser has been started to help them out. So if you can, throw them a few dollars. A popular cartoon, Bob's Burgers, <laughs> will be doing an episode parodying ponies this April. I don't personally watch the show, so I can't say I know much a lot of people it, do. <laughs> I, I've heard a lot of people talking about it, so we'll see how that goes. In some toy news, McDonald's, has, their Rainbow Power Toys that we mentioned last week, yep. they're up on the website set for everyone to see. Oh, boy. So if you want to go take a look at what they look like. Which well, you already could, but now yeah. they're officially. Now that it's official up there on McDonald's site. Forbidden Planet, a site that sells a whole bunch of pop culture merchandise, has Twilight Sparkle bookends up for sale. Hmm. I know someone here is going to have to get a set of those. Maybe. <laughs> you know you want them. Yeah, but what am I going to do with them? <laughs> I'm pretty sure you'll find a use. <laughs> anyway, Argos, a UK brand, has some really high-quality pony plushies that just came up for sale. I want them! Yeah, it's like they just came out of the woodworks. No one knew yeah. about them, really. Also. Boom, they have plushies, and they're for sale. Not yeah. pre-order, for sale. And they look pretty good, actually. Yeah, they do. So UK, if you're in... Yeah. UK. Yeah, if you're in the UK... And you want to buy me a Twilight Sparkle. <laughs> just saying. Yeah, good luck with that one. But yeah, they're there. Go check them out. We Love Fine has finally revealed the Twilight thing that they had been teasing all last week. Happens to be a future Twilight figurine thing. Yes. Styled very much after Metal Gear Solid. Yes, very much styled after. So if you're a Twilight fan, and I, I don't know anyone here who is one, you might want to go pick that one up. Right, because... By the way, because it's also a limited piece. Yeah. Here, it's limited production, so... Catch it quick. They might come out with more later. I don't know. They've done uh, No, they said this will be it. Okay. There'll be two so. waves. There'll be one that releases in June and another one that releases in October, I believe. And yeah. it's like 2400 each or something like that. So not a whole lot. Not a whole lot. If you want those, yeah. get to it. I'm looking. Yeah, it says first print edition is expected to ship late June. Second print edition is expected late October. No variant will be made for the future Twilight. 6.3 inches tall, 4.3. So it's actually a fairly good size. Six inches tall? Yeah. yeah that's... It's, it's a little over six inches tall. So we're talking. Yeah. That's pretty good size. 25 bucks. So, yeah, jump on that if you have the chance, if you want to. Yeah, that. and once it's gone, I'm, they're pretty much implying they're, yeah, one of two edition of 2400 Yep, so there you go. Limited edition, jump on it if you want it. We also have a couple synopsis and titles for new episodes that are coming out. Oh, man. Yeah, the first one is Tradia, and that'll be written by new writer Scott Sonnenborn. I believe that's how you pronounce it. And the synopsis is as follows. When the trip to the Rainbow Falls Trader Exchange doesn't go as planned, the girls learn just how valuable their friendship really is. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. The next one is Testing, Testing, 1, 2, 3, and that's written by Amy Keating Rogers. Synopsis is as follows. Rainbow Dash uses unconventional methods to prepare for her test to become a member of the Wonderbolts Reserves. Oh, boy. Yeah, that's interesting. By the way, episode 19 is airing after episode 22 yeah production number thing yeah so those are interesting the yeah, rainbow also falls confirmed. sounds like it's referenced back to the like when they were training for the uh yeah equestrian games that's what yeah. they're called <laughs> <laughs> unconventional so, methods though, methods and then what unconventional those are. methods i'm not entirely certain but i'm more interested reading in the <gasps> She's actually Wonder reading. Bolts Reserves. Yeah, Wonder Bolts Reserves, man. She's going to become part of the Wonder Bolts if she succeeds. Oh, no. <laughs> that's, oh, no. I mean, that would be cool, but that's like... Show ruined. Everyone go home. Yeah. Ride's dude. over. Yeah, so we'll see how that goes. Yeah, and by the way, there's also the, the air dates are also, let's see, testing, yes. testing, one, two, three is April 5th. And Traja is April 19th. Yes. So there's going to be break. a break, it looks Our like. Our first break is coming up. Which is good for us, actually, by yes. coincidence. Yes, by coincidence. <laughs> but, yeah. So we'll have, actually have a break for the first time in the entire season. almost at the end, too. Yeah. We're nearing that point. Yeah, it's getting closer. Ah! Yeah. And then the long wait till season five. Equestria Girls 2, apparently. 
Season five. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we had an episode. Yay. Mod Pie yep. was one that just came out. Pretty, well, different. Different. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was, it was interesting. Uh, basic plot line follows. Pinkie Pie is really, really excited because her sister Mod Pie is showing up in Ponyville for a week, I believe. So she wants all of her friends to get together and get to be good friends, so they can make um, rock can- candy necklaces together, because you know that's what that's a tradition that her and Mod have always had. So they're all excited, and when Mod shows up, she's not exactly what they <laughs> were expecting. No. She's like polar opposite of Pinkie Pie. Yep. Who's all hyper and bouncy, and Mod's just deadpan everything. <laughs> yep. And this kind of puts five of the six kind of off, because they really yeah. were not expecting that. And, they're, and the episode kind of it runs up them trying to figure out something that they can relate to Mod with. And not they run up short. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They really don't have that much in common with her until the very end when Pinky, you know, last attempt to try and get them to find something that related to this big obstacle course and Pinky gets stuck and big rock is about to fall on and crush her. Just surprising in it of itself that they did that. But Maud all of a sudden is a little bit out of character and just flies through the obstacle course to get to Pinky. Completely shreds the giant rock with her own hoof. <laughs> Yep. And freeze Pinky, and they realize that there's that's one thing that they have in common is their their love for their friend. Aww. Aww. So and then they they're friends and they make necklaces and it's pretty much the end of the episode. Yeah. So we'll start with you, Nemesis. What do you think? I'm not sure what to think. <laughs> <laughs> I think <laughs> most of us are kind of in that. I'm boat. like sitting here just like, huh. Kind of caught us all off of. I mean, it's guard. funny. I was definitely funny. Mm-hmm. I mean, this mod's attitude, I guess, personality. What personality there is? It's just yeah, she's very just it's emotionless. Mm-hmm. If you're it, basically the best comparison I can think of is Raven from Teen Titans. What basic, very, very deadpan, just very monotone, just talks like this all the time. Yeah, and she has a pet rock. She has a pet rock named Boulder. <laughs> named Boulder. That was <laughs> Which, funny. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, there's a lot of. There's, there's, it kind of starts off with just you know Pinky's all excited. And we see this little crayon illustration of what she's talking about on you know even on line paper and everything. It's just everything's super happy. And then finally when Maud shows up, it's just complete polar opposite. Just, <laughs> oh, just, Which I guess it would fit better for weird. Rock so yeah, on. it's just. It can, it kind of this episode kind of deals with the whole idea. Of just you know, sometimes you just meet someone you just can't really connect with. Yeah, you just, you have a hard time because they're just so different from you, or just so hard to get a grasp on what they're like. It's just, or you can get a good grasp. It's just like you're not really too interested in befriending them. Yeah, That's it's it's a good episode, definitely for for getting that across. It was. Yeah. It was pretty fun, I would say. There was there was a few scenes. Yes. There was a, definitely a few scenes, like when they each they each go out one on one with with Maud trying mm-hmm. to find something. something there was one scene with Rainbow Dash. And they're shot put with rocks. Yeah. Okay. Rainbow Dash does pretty good with you know, tossing her rock. And then Maud picks up and just Flings it across the horizon and what <laughs> mushroom cloud happens? With a gray mushroom cloud. A gray mushroom cloud. Yeah, it's like and what? Then a sh- and then a shockwave. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was just like don't challenge a rock farmer to a rock throwing contest. Don't. Just don't do it. Just like you wouldn't train. I guess you wouldn't challenge Dash to a air race. Yeah. Don't ever. <laughs> Unless you're Spitfire or something. Yeah, unless Even you're Spitfire. then, unless you're a Wonderbolt. So. Kinda, yeah, <laughs> what? <laughs> that was there was a lot of times during that the whole episode yeah. we we're just going, what? And <laughs> also, wow, the rock puns. The rock puns. So, so many rock jokes. Many rock puns. <laughs> what was it? A rockdurate and rockology or something? <laughs> yeah. 
Are you serious? Yes. <laughs> there was that line Dash spouted. Yeah. Pony wrapped in mystery inside of a riddle inside right. of an igneous. Don't you mean an enigma? No, an igneous. Guess how I know what that is. <laughs> the type of rock. Guess how I know how that. What that yeah, that was great. And yeah, it's, it's just weird. You know, it's we, just interesting just watching them. Just They have no idea how to handle this. We don't really see them in this sort of uh, situation before. We just, they have, there's this pony. They don't know how to handle it. They don't know how to interact with them because it's just, they're so different yeah they're not cheery they're not bright they're not exciting they're not they're just there i mean i don't express my enthusiasm as much as pinkie pie does exactly yeah, that's yeah we can tell and, and then, then there's the poetry the poetry the rock poetry what a thousand poems all about rocks all about rocks she didn't read other poems she only writes her own yeah to be honest, sometimes the way Pinky was describing her, it was when she initially sounded like a bad OC. Yeah. It really did. It did. Which I almost want to say that's a jab, but you never kind know. Of. But basically, it's just like, you know, what's what Pinky sees yeah. through the Pinky filter. And it's not really true, but. Yeah. At all. <laughs> dish towel. Oh, yeah, and she likes the dish towel. Yeah, when it came to what, picking a fabric, she liked the dish towel. The Just dirty the dish, dish towel. towel. Just the dirty dish towel. Or a scarf. It's like, um, okay. <laughs> but, yeah. It makes you wonder what the other two sisters are like. It does. I really wish we could see them. <clears throat> <clears throat> yes. <laughs> oh, and trying to peel an apple as she used to peel it, she just smashes just it with a rock. Smash it with a rock. <laughs> Make, that made Applejack rather nervous. I think that would make most people nervous. <laughs> Please put down the rock. <laughs> Please put down the rock. Oh, and the, the pets. The, the, all the, the main oh, six kill. pets were there because they heard, you know, she likes animals like Father Shy, so they're bringing the pets. And yeah, but she has a pet anyway, and it's just like we said, it's a rock. It's a pet rock. In her pocket, cause of course, which makes, initially makes Father Shy excited because it's a pocket pet. So what is it? Is it a little it's mouse? A rock. It's a rock. Name Boulder. Oh. <laughs> and then they decided to play a game called Camouflage, which is like hide to see, except way more intense. So way more intense. Yeah, that's for sure. Yeah, so, yeah, they basically have to find Boulder out of a whole bunch of rocks and guess where Boulder was. In her pocket. In the pocket. And, of course, then the, we see the scene of all these pets just so just tired, just bored and listless with... <laughs> <laughs> which is kind of so perched on tanks propeller, just kind of spinning around slowly. Was spinning. <laughs> that was a great scene. And just, yeah, just seeing the music just kind of sit there, just, I don't know what to do. Yeah, it's a situation you don't commonly run into it, but you do in real life. It's, it's a tough one. Yeah. How do you handle something like that? Yeah. So. And I did like the begin the, be the beginning with uh, Pinky just. She's, you know, she's so rock excited, rock. and at one point, she, you know, she wants to meet her friends to talk about this super important thing. Of course, it's even before Celestia Rose, Rose raise the sun. Yeah, and so early. they, and eventually, she gets so excited, she starts, you know, her name in, and she actually literally tosses two of them into the <laughs> house. Yep, jumps and out, tosses two of them the rock in, and the taste test the rock candy. Yeah, made from actual rocks. of rock candy. Yes, yes, but it's a special kind of rock. Special they never actually. Rock. Mentioned what kind or anything, that. but yeah, it's rock. Yeah, and of course they're I'll get all sick because so much rock candy. So much rock candy. But it, it was. It was also just kind of at the, be the end though. With after well before that though, when they the the five of them try to tell Pinky that they're not quite connecting with her sister. Yeah, how do you and, how do you break that? To yeah, someone? not only they, they, you can see they're. Noticeably nervous, and not only that, just Apple just kind of pushes Twilight <laughs> forward to tell him because it's like you're the princess, you're, you're the, the leader, leader. <laughs> your job. Though Applejack was the one who kind of finalized the yeah. And anyway, once she start got the ball rolling, the Honestly, rest kind of though, and even then they still kind of avoided just straight up saying it. Yeah, and then you, you saw Pinky's hair deflate a little, which is some um, not fully, but a not little fully bit. flat, but yeah, just kind of deflated. Which is like they've said they've before that every dark now and pink, then. Yeah, I think they did it a little bit. Yeah, you know, when she gets sad, it just kind of deflates a bit. This was definitely like noticeably. You can even hear how the that sound effect. So <laughs> they said before, like Pinky, for Pinky's hair to deflate, it has to be put her in a dark place. So she was pretty upset yeah. over this. 
up to the point where she got all desperate and made this crazy obstacle course yeah. game thing, which obstacle. turned out to be dangerous and stupid. Yeah, just a little. Just a little. And, of course, yeah. And then we, and then we see Ma just, like, all of a sudden just react and goes, what? <laughs> just like holy crap because normally she, you know, she's really, just and then really she's just sitting there just punching the rock into pe- yeah. little tiny pieces she carves the rock to pieces with her puffs it's like holy crap yeah she's kind of strong isn't it? And yeah we saw that with the rock toss but yeah holy crap <laughs> and smashes the rock that is holding pinky in place just with one shot yeah well, one hit rock. yeah one hit and the whole thing just splinters man that's what happens when you work on a rock farm, I guess. It's like how you don't challenge Applejack to an apple bucking contest. Apples. Apples. Rock apples. Oh, no. Yeah. It was, I, I thought it was a pretty good episode. Yeah. It wasn't, you know, a huge amount of meat to it. No. Again, no keys or or anything like that showed up. It's just just a little. It was funny, though. A little episode. It was funny. It was pretty funny just because of the whole, just the absurdities. <laughs> Yeah. And, oh, one thing I did like. One thing I did like at the end was uh, when they were leaving and they made the the rock candy necklaces. Oh, <laughs> they're all normal rock candy necklaces except for Dash's. Yeah, well, Dash, <laughs> well, that wasn't what I was talking about. But when, um, Mod pulls out a box and opens it and it's a whole bunch of necklaces already in there and turns out she doesn't eat them. She doesn't like candy. She only does it because for her sister. Yep. Because her was sister likes sweet. it, so. But, yeah. All the necklaces they made in Dash, of course. Instead of your standard rock candy necklace, one big piece of candy in the same shape and color as your element, the lightning bolt. Yeah. And it was dragging across the ground. I thought that was funny. Huge ego. Yep. So. Yeah. It was funny. It was okay. I'm not going to rant it, you know, taut, but it wasn't the worst. It wasn't... It's about the middle. I liked it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, you know, if I call this was a new writer. Yeah. New writer for so. this episode. So this is a pretty good first impression. Yeah. I will say so. I I hope, you know. Yeah. It just, it's still kind of weird because, like, so many fans want to see her other two sisters. And they, they gave her as a sister, just not the ones not, we always <laughs> wanted. They just created a brand new one to show us. Yeah. So it's like, well, could we see... Igneous and limestone? Or? I thought Igneous was the dad. Maybe limestone and Inky marble. And Inky. Marble. <laughs> marble. Marble and limestone. That's what yeah, it was. Yeah, those are the two. Yeah. You're going to have to get used to it. I know. Get used to it. Marble yeah, but it's limestone. also Maud is an older sister, so. Yep. We don't know the age of the other two. And at least I don't think, unless it said something in the book, which apparently are canon too, so. Yeah, maybe we didn't see him because she's enough older. I mean, she was going off on a, I believe it was a science project? Yeah, some sort of long-term project. But we know she's older. They said so at the end. Yeah. My big sister, she think he said so. Yep. So. The BSBFF. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> Just her best friend forever, yeah. That's not a reference to anything. <sighs> now we've met family. Of all the main six, except for the two Pegasus. And even then, Dash, we've seen her dad, at least. We've seen her. Yeah, we've seen... Her dad. We've seen him, her dad. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. We've seen her dad. He's never spoken or anything. never spoken. We didn't get any confirmation on the fact that it's her dad, but I think it's fairly well assumed. It's pretty obvious. Yeah. But that's the most... Fluttershy is the only one we know nothing about her family. Yeah. It it's one of those things where it'd be kind of nice to see that because we we know Applejack's family's been there pretty much from the beginning just because yeah that's family's really important to her it's part of her character and the fact that missing parents right rarity we we got this we got Sweetie Belle as her sister and then we saw her parents eventually yep and they're of course from Wisconsin turned out which made it extra hilarious yep Twilight we got Shining Armor is her brother we got that out of nowhere and then. But we got her parents a while back. A while back, yeah. yeah. And Pinky, we got, of course, Rock Farm, and the two sisters now a third sister. Yeah. And so Fluttershy, and of course Dash, the dad, and so Fluttershy is the only one we don't know anything. Yeah. Nothing about family with her at all. We have no idea. Yeah. As far as I could tell, she fell off a cloud way back when she was a kid, and she's left down on the ground ever since. So who knows well, what happened? She did fall off a cloud. <laughs> yeah. She fell yeah. off a cloud way back when, and then she kind of just landed on a bunch of butterflies and just kind of stayed there. 
Yeah, that yeah, is whatever. what happened. But yeah. So then, of course, it makes you wonder where, where her parents. Well, who are they? Yeah, they haven't said anything about how that works. Watch him sink Flutter Dash by saying, "Oh, Flutter Sag's actually related to Dash." Ah! Hey, now, mm-hmm. that's on my approved list. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I don't. I think. I think if those two were related, we'd, we'd know, know by, by now. now. <laughs> and the only other, we don't really know much about. Pegasi families at all, really. There's no real reason to assume they're any different. Yeah, there's no real reason to assume different, but it's interesting that they it's haven't just, shown you know, any. We really. only got Dash's dad, really. Yeah. But yeah, even Scootaloo we're still in, has the mystery of. Yep. The only other one that we even know about is the Rumble and Thunder Lane. Yeah. Is the siblings. Siblings. And, well, that's well it. I guess... We also know, of course, that you know two Earth ponies can have Pegasus children yeah, because cakes. of the cakes. Yeah. So. And now that we've gone completely off topic, it happens. <laughs> it happens. We're still talking about the show, but yeah, it's yes. just interesting. I'd like to see. I guess even though I, I, I you know what? Help make Fluttershy more interesting for me. Show me her family. Yes. I'd like to see this too. <laughs> like, what's the deal? With, is, does she have like? Does it like a lot of? Like fanfics I've seen where it's like her dad or someone is like overbearing, expecting her to be like a star, and she's just not. I've seen stuff like that. I've is I've her heard. mother. You know, I've noticed a lot of people like. I think this is doesn't come up as much now, but there was the whole like Posey was her inspiration from yeah. the older generations. A lot of people like to make her her mom, and Posey was basically Fluttershy without wings. Yeah, and they've done that with a few of the other characters, like Firefly for Rainbow Dash, yeah. and the almost canon one for Twilight. Yeah, it pretty much <laughs> is Twilight yeah. Twinkle, but Twilight Velvet instead. Yeah. Which, by the way, I'd like to see Twilight's parents also actually have a speaking role. Yeah. At least you get to see them. Yeah, we got <laughs> to see them, but still, I'd like to see them have a speaking role. Yeah. I want to know what they sound like. I want to see how they, you know, interact with the other two. I want to see, like, a family visit thing. Surprise! Surprise! Have Shining show up. Shining and her parents. Oh gosh. Oh gosh. Just randomly show up. Many of them have actually gone it. to Ponyville. You're right. None of them have. It's always we see them Canada Just have them randomly show up and watch Twilight go completely neurotic. <laughs> I didn't prepare. <laughs> Why are you here? Well, let's be honest. It's all we all go a little neurotic when our parents just drop by out unexpectedly. Uh, I still live with mine so no well do you don't you, you would <laughs> yeah it's like what are you doing you would. Here? i'd have why you are you have here watch up what's this, this stuff in your office why are you here <laughs> get out yeah I, I would definitely like to see more family yeah more backstory anyway, this is actually a pretty good episode i guess yeah it was it was it was up there it was definitely enjoyable yeah moving on to our next discussion topic the Friends Forever number three issue. Woo-hoo. I'll let you take that one. Oh, of course. Yeah, this is yeah, this is the uh, Celestia and Spike issue, which I was like, how in the world are they going to do that one? Same here. And that's uh, actually surprising how what they did. And I think I actually enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. I was kind of surprised as Lori because let's be honest, I'm not going to be I'm going to be honest again. Spike is not exactly my favorite character. Yeah. And but. And the thing is, Celestia is kind of a blank slate. We don't really know much about her. They kind of, I don't know why they're doing this, but they kind of really have left her really vague about what she, who she is. Even We know some things, but not a whole lot. We just, she's just kind of this, like, princess on a pedestal, really, still. Yeah. Even tough. with the faults we've seen. Yeah. Like, seeing her get defeated by the changelings or her love of cake. Love of cake. Yep. But yeah, we, but it's just basically yeah. It's, and Spike and Spike's trying to get a present for Twilight, and Celeste, he goes to Celestia for help. So, it actually, goes to Celestia. He didn't just send yeah. her a letter. And it turns out, yeah, sure. There's a guy who can make a telescope, but he needs lenses. Yeah, he just so they have to go to the Crystal Mountain. So Celestia decides to go with Spike. Yeah, because it's too dangerous. To send him alone. Yep. Here, take this. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's, we get we get, basically. It kind of answers a couple questions of a lot of people the fan have had. Like, it, why in the world does Celestia not do anything? It does. I, I want to say that it was written specific, almost specifically to answer that. Yeah. And it's just, she's letting Twilight handle it so she can learn. Yep. I would say, yes, I could. But she wouldn't have learned. She needs to learn. Yeah. So. So, 
that was interesting and kind of also kind of deals a bit with spikes in securities a bit. Mm-hmm. Again, it was nice to see. It was character building on both their yeah. parts. So, also, again, I'm going to be honest again, more on my interest in Celestia's side because that's the one that's been plaguing me for that since like the beginning. It's like, who is Celestia exactly? Who is yeah. she? Why didn't she help at all? It's like, it turns out, yeah, sometimes it's just there's a few times where she could have, she tried to help or something and kind of a. And she's also like, is even specific. I'm not trying to be cruel. I'm not doing it as a joke. <laughs> it's like those are both. Bits. It's like wow, this is like they're specifically like attacking every little point the fandom tries to make about Celestia. Yep. She's not a tyrant. She has a reason for doing what she does. Mm-hmm. So that's it's actually so yeah. This is actually a pretty good one. Uh, just, I don't I don't recognize the artist. I'm pretty sure it's a new one. It was good art though. I want yes. I want to say it was very well, well done. Pretty well done. Yeah, I I definitely enjoy this one. It, I I say it was just just under number two. Yeah, two. Just I think two under was better, number two. Obviously but, better than the first one. But yeah. So yeah, this is, this also has a couple of little references here and there that kind of made me chuckle a bit. Namely, there was this these things pop up called rock lobsters. Rock lobster. Exactly. <laughs> if anyone know that song? You better know that song. I don't know how many of our viewers are old enough to know that song. If you if you're not old enough, come on. Okay, it was in one of the rock band games, so there you go. Yes. <laughs> so yeah, it was a it was a good it was a good little comic. Good and issue. It's not a whole lot of Not graphic. a lot of meat to it. But yeah, it's just but it had it had some good little bit of backstory. Mm-hmm. Character building. It's nice. A little bit of character building. And so. there was something in here that kind of there was something in here that kind of implies something that was kind of... Wait a minute. I'm trying to remember what it was. Oh! Right on the first page. Sea Pony. Oh, yes. They actually mentioned mention Sea Pony. Sea Ponies. It's like, so basically, this kind of confirmed... If this stays... Because they do... I know they talk to the people who make the show when they make these to well, make sure they don't there? trample all over them. Yeah. So this kind of... It's like... Sea Ponies just might have just become canon in well, technically, G4. Technically, being official, they are canon. Yeah. Though we do have that one that was book. There's a book. Yeah. There's a book. I don't think they were called. I can't remember if they were called Sea Pony. But yeah, we got Sea Pony, though. But yeah. For sure. And the, this is like. Sea this is the second highest canon tier. Yep. So we got Sea Ponies, unless. Sea Ponies are canon. Unless, like, unless the show itself kind of. Like, derives. Derives, you know, it's just. Yeah. I don't see them doing that, though. Yeah. I don't see them specifically. In the show, saying He's like, "What do you know?" Next thing you're gonna tell me, you believe in sea ponies. Yeah, <laughs> maybe something like that. But if they did that. I was like, "Oh crap!" Oh, we crap. just got caught in a snarl. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> but then it's always the show beats comics in this point. So, but yeah, it was it was a good one. I enjoyed it. Uh, it was it was kind of, it was kind of we got we got character building. We particularly for Celestia who desperately needs it. Yes. I mean, even her. Uh, even I her think comp, Spike could use even it her too. micro series didn't really hit her, really build her character much up yeah, either. Not really. Which is kind of interesting, but yeah, this is this comic actually adds more depth to Celestia's character, which is really really needed. I'm really hoping some point we get more because we kind of got a bit at the season four premiere, but mm-hmm. still, it's just like she's still very blank. Blank. Blank is her coat. Yep. So. Blank as a CMC's flanks. Ah! Yep, I did it. <laughs> yeah, so, good issue. Recommend to go pick it up. Yeah, go get it. We have some fan content to talk about, though. Oh, man. So, let's move on to that. I think, I think I'll think i start with some music. So, first up, we've got one called We're Gonna Make My Sister See from Nicholas Dominique. Interesting little song, kind of light, kind of airy, kind of sits in the background. It takes pretty much like one or two lines from one of our recent episodes. From some pony to watch over me. Yeah. It takes this, the beginning of the song, I think, yep. or the song. The song. There's only like two lines. I can't even remember the. Yeah, the song. Line. The song that was aborted because we don't have time for a song. 
Yeah. But yeah, it, it, it just takes them and puts them to some background music. Mm-hmm. And I found it was a nice little song to listen yeah. to. It's not, not an active one, yeah. just constantly put it on. It's just a pretty to mellow. Song, but it, it's something to put on in the background, just kind of mellow to it. Yeah, it's a very mellow electronic song, which you don't get a whole lot of because most of it's both for like like clubs and stuff. So it's very upbeat and fast. And yeah, this is closer to a trance. Style. Yeah, this is more. Yeah, this is so much a more of a slower, much more mellow yep. song. Which I believe Nicholas Dominique, This is more the style that he does. He does mm-hmm. sound to do a bit more upbeat stuff, but this is this is closer to his his norm. So if you like that kind of stuff, look into Nicholas Dominique. Yeah, it it it's electronic music, and it just takes you know the same two or three lines, I guess, and just kind of over and over again. But it, it works. It works because it's not you know. Yeah, because part of part of it's just because of the style it's going for. It fits with that style very yeah. well. So it's more of a background mellow song. Yeah, it's very, very so much. It doesn't it's, have to have. Yeah, you know, I don't want. I don't want to say lyrics. it's bad because it's background. Because it's no. it, it's very much a song you just kind of put on, and it's just kind of you're not yep. like it's not super high energy. It's just very. It, it, uh, it's it's not what I call an active listening song. It's it's not something you put on and only list just listen to the song. It's something you put on to give an ambience and kind of a feeling as you're doing something else. Yeah, I agree. With and that, that that's that feels like what it's intended for. So and it works. It works yeah. for that. The next one I have is on hold by your enigma. I was forever in your debt. I love to watch you play your cello, never see you sweat. See you cool as an ice cube, but playing the right tune, make the strings sing. Want the orchestra's behind you. Why? When you got the big gig, everything you had to practice, everything you did. And so every single second of the day you were occupied, couldn't find a little time for me, even if you tried. Yeah, Octavia, won't you tell me why? You are leaving me on hold. Oh no. a Tavi and Scratch song. It's part of a series of songs that Your Enigma was actually doing. I believe this is the last one, or at least the latest, that you might do more. But it's featuring Rhyme Flow, and it has a hip-hop kind of style to it. Not usually a fan of hip-hop, but this I actually really enjoyed. How about you? Well, it was different. <laughs> different than uh, you I was expecting. I was like, when I got it, I was like, oh, that, I was not expecting this at all. I'll say that much. I think I liked it for the most part. Sometimes the lyrics, lines, rap, whatever you want to call it, uh, they're kind of, sometimes it got a little stumbly. Just a little bit stumbly, kind of weird, kind of didn't quite fit properly. There was a few times where I did that. There was a few times, there's a few times it was kind of felt very basic and that it just didn't, yeah, it didn't flow right sometimes. Sometimes it was more like, yeah, I didn't, I didn't, I can't really describe it that well, but just sometimes just, it kind of felt like a really basic rap like you know i guess yeah I can but yeah it just it. That also then like i said words just sometimes it kind of tripped over itself like i'm doing right now <laughs> yeah well, you're doing yeah so yeah it just trips over itself a couple times and it's kind of like oh whoops it doesn't quite work and actually kind of do i do like it does tell a story which you know when you get some music that actually tells a story it's always really nice because sometimes you get a lot of just especially now with this phantom where it's a lot of it's electronic and i'm not saying electronics bad i actually like electronica but i'm just in, the, in this fandom in particular this of music you don't get a whole lot of just this sort of thing i mean you get some of like the big name guys who've kind of moved on from just doing remixes to their, they're doing their own like original music and stuff but this one is actually pretty nice and i liked it it's just a couple issues and i think there's a couple times where the voice was a little quiet too but yeah, there was there was a couple of things there, but but it was actually really good and not what I usually listen to, but I still enjoyed it. So if if that's your thing, go check that out. Up next, we have a fanfic. Yes, fanfic. Yeah, take yeah. that away, Nemesis. Yeah, I picked a. I had a bit of a rough time this week. I had a couple lined up, but no, this was the one I I think worked out the best of the three this time. It's called "Friendship Is Applejack" by Astro Brony. Apples. And it's interesting. It kind of has a few parallels to, like, I guess, Return of Harmony and Magical Mystery Cure. You'll kind of see it. What you, when, I, when you read it, you'll see what I mean. But basically uh-huh. what happens is Applejack's feeling a little down because her friends can't see her off when she goes on a trip. I can't remember what it was exactly. Yeah. 
But if she went on a trip and her, you know she's feeling a little down, Apple Bloom sees that and decides she sees a wishing well up here that she'd never seen before on the farm, and she you know decides to wish that her friends could understand what Applejack's feeling. And when she makes that wish, well, her friends start noticing weird things are happening, like Twilight suddenly can't use magic and Rainbow Dash can't fly anymore. And then they start noticing they're starting to use more and more of a Applejack's accent accent and phrases and whatnot it gets worse it gets, yeah it gets worse and worse until they all just think and then eventually all five of them just think they're applejack yep they even get freckles yeah even they even have freckles and they start wearing their manes different and wearing the hats and everything but and then then applejack comes back and is very confused <laughs> what well the apple <laughs> is confused first but yeah and because and the thing is there's chaos in the town because none of them are doing their jobs now and they're all on the farm trying to be Applejack. Yeah. And the thing is, it's funny because they all see each other as Applejack and themselves as Applejack. If you ask them why they're purple, it's like, I'm not purple. Yeah. Or something. Or why is your cutie mark dip not Applejacks? So what are you talking about? Those are three apples. Yep. Like they've always been. <laughs> it's like, uh-oh. Yep. So it's very, it's kind of a funny little fic, I guess. It's, yeah, so I just want to know what you thought of it. I thought it was pretty funny. Uh, like you said, it, there was a lot of parallels with Magical Mystery Cure, with the whole swapping things around. But it was, it was definitely a good little read. Yeah. Uh, I picked it, and there's a couple things I've kind of like, eh, this kind of feels a little flat. But for the most part, it was it's semi-short. Semi-short. It's, it's four like chapters long. Uh, apparently the author words. The author might write an alternate ending. I'm not sure what he's going to do. But, yeah. It's yeah, it's kind of there's a couple funny bits. It's just kind of hey, look, it's Applejack. Remember Applejack, best background pony. <laughs> yep. So yeah. it was definitely a playoff of that one. It's playing off that sort of thing. It's just it's pretty. It's kind of funny just watching it, just watching things unfold. So there's that. It's not. It's not like I don't. It's not like amazing or epic or anything. It's just a funny little short ish story so if you're looking to find something to read and don't have like a huge amount of time to start an epic read, you just want something a little up. funny. Look yep. at it. 21,000 words. <laughs> that's it. Yeah. Remember, that's actually not that long. Yeah, it isn't actually that long. But up next, I believe we have uh, a couple things to give away. Yeah, I remember last week I said I was giving away the Funko Twilight and Trixie. Well, here's the thing. I'm going to give away two this week. That's one Twilight, one Trixie. Next week, I'll give away the other two. So if you don't win this week, you still have a chance. So remember, to, to do so, to enter, you have to email us at pony411podcast at gmail.com. Remember that. And please specify which pony you're entering for. I had a couple entries which did not do that. Same. Same. Well, not really, but still, you need to specify. And if, by the way, if you already entered and you didn't win, you don't have to enter again. So don't worry about it. You're still in the running. So, But if you thought you missed out, just don't worry about it. You can still enter. And you can still win a Twilight or a Trixie, and possibly both, because like I said, you can enter for both. Yep. Just say so. Yep. Just so yeah. Remember and remember to specify that. Do not just kind of email me with nothing in there, because that doesn't help me at all. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. so to start us off, so this first week's winners, they are Miguel Ortiz, and then he won Twilight Sparkle. I'm sorry if I butcher your names. And Alan Smithy, who won Trixie. So congrats to both of them. Okay. Yeah, so that's the first set. Like I said, next week I'll do the other two drawings. And I'll be contact both of the winners soon to get their addresses and whatnot so I can get these sent off. Yep. So woohoo. Yeah. Hopefully the rest of you guys have a chance for that. Yes. I believe that is all we have for today. Mm -hmm. So if you liked what you heard... You can download all of our episodes directly at pony411.libsyn.com. That's L-I-B-S-Y-N.com. You can also find us on iTunes. Just search for Pony411. We're also on YouTube, youtube.com slash pony411. Also, if you're listening to us on Ponyville FM, we're, we air every Tuesday at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern. So catch us there. If you want to get a hold of us, and I recommend you do, <laughs> send us whatever, you can contact us at pony411podcast at gmail.com, like we said earlier. You can also contact us on Twitter. That's at pony411 or twitter.com slash pony411. 
We're also on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Pony411. <laughs> so, if you want to contact us individually, you can. We are on Twitter. Nemesis is at Nemesis Prime 1. And I'm at Alcatraz. That's two under it's underscore Alcatraz underscore and the T is a 7. I hate it as much as you do. <laughs> but yes, get a hold of us. Go listen to our stuff. That's all we have for today. And please remember, please pony responsibly. Good night. Thank you.